And people, and I keep reading about my sign. Like everybody, it seems like half the people I know, if you tell them what sign you are, they know what that means. I don't. But now I'm learning that because I'm a cancer, everybody's like, oh, you're the nurturer. You're the mother. You're the one who wants. And I'm like, yes, that's true. But I'm starting to think that most women generally, and maybe a lot of women our age are that way. Like, I don't think it's just because I'm a cancer. I think that it is like prevalent through most of the people I know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm a Leo, so I'm like, I'm all like, da, 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 la, la, da, da, yeah, um, loud and performing and, and um, strong and all that real fire sign. And yeah, I, but I still have this nurturing side. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that the people I love. Are Do you happy. think it's because I mean, so you're from Denmark, right? Yes, I don't. I don't even begin to pretend I understand the culture in that country, but I'm wondering, do you think it's because our parents just weren't that nurturing to us? Because that's how I feel. At least that's yeah. how I feel like a lot of American parents were. And now I feel like I'm going overboard. So I kind of think, I mean, I've been thinking about this actually a lot in like last six months or so, <laughs> because there's been whole, this whole thing about like boomers and millennials <laughs> and, and okay, generation boomer. <laughs> X, okay, boomer. Uh, and, uh, but I started thinking about it and I'm like, if you think about it, okay, so we have the, what is commonly known as the greatest generation, the second world war people. And they went to war and they saw horrible things and they all came home with a bunch of PTSD that was never addressed because you didn't address stuff like that back then. Right. And they raised a bunch of kids uh, probably pretty badly. Yeah. I mean, no offense <laughs> to the greatest generation, but they but probably they suck at being parents. They were probably really sucky parents because yeah. they were a bunch of well, they PTSD. Were kind of, yeah, in survival yeah. mode in the Complete sense that they didn't know how to mode. function. Yeah. So they raised this generation of people who grew up with a lack of attention, love, whatever. And they're like the self-exploration generation, the boomers. Yeah. So they grew up, they had kids, and then they wanted to go realize themselves. Yeah. Which meant, While their kids were four. <laughs> so like, we're just going to leave them at home which and go out to the bar. We grew up as latchkey kids. Yes, totally. <laughs> and we grew up and saw that and thought, wow, that's really sucky. Yeah, let's do the opposite, let's which is also opposite. sucky, by the way. We're right. helicoptering over our children. Oh, absolutely. We, so in Denmark, you call them curling parents because you don't know. <laughs> exactly. You're doing the broom in front of them. <laughs> the Olympic curl oh that's way better than helicopter I, it's, 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 i think it's such a great term curling oh, parents. i love it it's curling parents <laughs> and that's what we're doing now i'm trying not to but i still catch myself i mean god i mean compared to my child <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, right it's, for sure uh, it's, i'm all over those kids you know just this weekend i my daughter's 14 my son is five and i let her take him there was a carnival here in petaluma at the fairgrounds and I hate carnivals, fairs. I, I, I hate right? them so much. And my son is like, mom, I want to go. I want to go. And normally I'd be like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> but my daughter was like, all right, I'll take him, which I was shocked because she's usually not very nice to him. But I, so I let the two of them go to this little fair by themselves. I just dropped him off and I was, so, I was so nervous and so uncomfortable but it had nothing to do with her ability to take care of him. Um, it just, I, I don't know. I was just so nervous. I put my business card in his pocket and I put like a note on it. And I'm like, okay, if you're standing here and you get lost and you can't find your sister, find the guy that looks like this. And here's the card. And here's the like, um, and they were, they were there for like an hour and a half. It was no big deal, but I was trying so hard not to do that helicoptering. Like, yes. no, you can't go unless I'm there to hover over you thing. Uh, and it worked out fine. They were alive when I picked them up. Exactly. Like, that, they're fine. So this is funny because this is exactly what my 12-year-old did. My 12-year-old went to the fair with friends by themselves last Friday. Yeah. And it's like that for the first time. <gasps> and again, it was just like, yeah. I, I don't know. My 12-year-old listens to Crime Junkie a lot. So I feel like she's got it down Yeah, with don't totally. talk to strangers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Don't take candy from the guy in the dark blue van. Exactly. That's going to drive us. To Don't you. talk too much to the yeah, candy guy. Um, totally. But yeah, I have the same thing. I, I constantly have to check myself because my yeah. instinct is to absolutely overprotect and be ridiculous. And they, I mean, they don't, 
they need to grow up. They need to make some mistakes. Yes, they I mean, need to be able to sake. go out and fall, totally and do stupid shit and take risks. And if I think of the totally. stuff I got up to, <laughs> even when I was twelve, when I was her age, I'm thinking I, the fact that I didn't get killed by some yeah. predator at some point right. is, is is a miracle. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> do you remember? Well, again, this is my experience of here in the states. But when I was a kid, you know, it's like in the eighties. I remember, like. Serial killers were a big thing. <laughs> yeah, but again, so, can I just say, is it? I, I feel like there was more serial killers in that generation. I do too, <laughs> right? And my mom's like, "Here, you're five. Just go walk through the desert to kindergarten. I'll be sleeping when you get home." Right? Oh my god. Well, I know. I I do think that there's we've gone the other direction, like a little too far, and back to becoming aware of like what our boundaries are and what our needs are. I don't know. It's a it's a new thing for me as well to start diving into this. And I, probably it's been since at least the summer. So not very long, less than half a yeah. year that I've been like, all right, I need to put some boundaries up. I need to start figuring out what the fuck do I want to do in my life. And, and yes, I can still be a good human and take care of other people, but not at the expense of myself anymore. Totally. I and just, that's why I am too. That's, this has been a whole kind of journey for me in like the last year or so yeah like setting these boundaries why do you think it's just been so recent for us i don't know like i'm wondering if now that i'm thinking about it it's like there's some sort of there's a there's something happening probably outside of us you know in the media or in 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 the content that we're consuming where everybody's just talking about it maybe it's like it's i don't know is it related to me too maybe (laughs) I don't know. It's like, I feel like there's like a feminist kind of re- resurgence of, yeah, and it just comes out in different. I don't know, but I definitely, I definitely agree. Oh, well, that's just because all of our friends are around are like forties, and yeah. it's it's an age thing, right? We're all just going through it now. Yeah. But also, I think it's pretty common, and even with our parents, but although our mothers were probably so uptight that they just stuffed it all inside, but. Generally speaking, I think physiologically, as you become, you get into your forties, you also mentally start thinking about like, I don't really give a fuck about what everybody thinks about me as much anymore, or it's just stuff is harder. So you're like, you just let that shit go on a certain level. And then you, you start becoming aware of your body, your emotions, um, at this age, I mean, even sexually, I think generally we talked about this the other night at the bar, right? Yeah, like we, in your forties, we're, we're talking a lot about blowjobs. We were, <laughs> and oh, I have an update on that, by the way. Ooh. I totally have an update on that. Let me finish this thought. Um, we just even in your body, sexually, you become more um, open and you know, like because you're more interested in what really pleasures yourself as opposed to just yes. what pleasures your partner. Um, all of that kind of thing. So I don't know. I wonder if it's just, like you said, an age thing. Like- I, I think, I mean, for me, I mean, I'm, I'm 42 now. When I turned 40, that was like a game changer for me. And not in a bad way. Like I have never felt as good or as sexy or as powerful. And Yeah, me too. Then than when I turned 40. It was amazing. I mean, I took a few more I, years. Than I that, literally I had, I remember, and I think it was 41, and I walked into a cafe and random stranger walks up to me and say, you know what, when you walk in, you look like a goddamn lioness. <laughs> and like, I looked at him, it's like, <laughs> I, I know. Feel like one. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I I've had moments like it. that. I have had moments like that too. It feels amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. And also, I think my whole life I've been so kind of, um, I valued all my attractiveness on like outer stuff. Like how do I look physically? Right. Um, which again, I mean, I, I take pride in, 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 in how I look. I take care of myself. But what I'm noticing now is that, God, men – love what I actually have to say. Mm-hmm. And I'm noticing that they actually love my intelligence and stuff like that. And, and your accent, they are ex- probably. <laughs> <laughs> but they get excited about that. And I'm noticing that now. I didn't notice that. I didn't mm-hmm. have the confidence to even notice that when I was in my 20s, like even in my 30s. Yeah. And that's really power- empowering to notice yeah. that now that 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 guys are actually, they think it's awesome that I that I have a, a, good, a high IQ. They yeah. find that 
fascinating. Well, when I, I was can... 20, I used to, I used to play dumber than I was because I didn't <laughs> want to, I, I didn't want to yeah. scare them away right. by being, being able to argue my ca- my case politically and all but that. But do you find, or have you found on occasion that pe- now men are starting to feel or could potentially be intimidated by that? I've had people tell me, well, you know, men tell mm-hmm. me you're intimidating. Like this well, see, is why you can't have a boyfriend. I, I don't know. See, I, I'm just feeling it's like those men. I wouldn't even spend five minutes on them, and Good point. I'm attracting smart, interesting men, which is perfect. Yeah, because we talked about this too the other really day. Really, like where the fuck anything. are you going? That you're finding all these smart, they come interesting to me. people. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, let me give you the update on the whole blowjob thing. So to, for listeners, we, I was literally in the middle of a circle of five or four beautiful women who were trying to teach me in a bar how to do a blowjob. Like, that's not going to take 20 or 40 minutes for the guy to get off. Like, which apparently it's not normal. <laughs> I found out where they're all like, what? <laughs> what the hell are you doing? It was amazing. I, so at that point, that night, I hadn't had an opportunity since then to put all of this into practice. <laughs> um, I still have it. I still have it. So that's the update, really, is just that I <laughs> I haven't had an opportunity to practice all the moves. And now I feel a little bit like I may have forgotten them. Well, you have a date tonight. I do have a date tonight. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to be blowing this guy, though. Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I guess anything's possible. Yeah, exactly. You never know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> um, I met this guy. Uh, so I just um, went back onto Bumble, which is a dating app. Um, dating I, app scares me. They suck. They really yeah. super suck. Um, and I've talked about this before. I've, I go on for like a week or two and then I'm like, what the, what am I doing? Like, I, it, it's not even fun for me. It's fun for my girlfriends to swipe left and right, but it's not fun for me. And I always find an excuse to not, you know, go on a date with somebody. And last weekend I was in Tahoe with my, one of my girlfriends. And so I was like, oh, maybe I should try and hook up with somebody up here and like practice my blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nobody in Tahoe that I was even remotely interested in, but I kept, I kept the app open. Um, and so this, pa- this week I've gotten connected with like four people, well, actually way more than four, but four that I actually was interested in like starting a conversation with and I'm leaving Friday for New York. So on Saturday I was like, how can I schedule like all of these people in between now and when I go to New York and like, kind of like a first interview type of thing. (laughs) Um, and so one of the dates for tonight, I ended up canceling last night's date the night before we didn't go on a date. We ended up talking on the phone. Like these are different people. I always find it a reason not to go because quite honestly, I think it's just that I'm not interested. Like I, I'm kind of like you, I'm very energetic. I meet people in a open space and I'm like, Oh yes, yes you're the person I want to talk to. Um, but anyway, I thought for tonight, I thought well, I should at least give the guy a chance. Like you should, like he, he was very kind and he wants to like meet me at some sweet place here. And Pet- he was actually the only one who was willing to be like, can I come meet you where you are? And can I take you to any of these really nice places? And that's a good sign. How, so, how hot is that? It's not, I mean, guys, it's freaking seriously. not. It's how really not. It? I, I'm so tired of connecting to somebody and like going through this whole texting thing. Like at some point, dude, if you're interested, can you just ask me for coffee? Oh God. Yeah. Can you drive please just drive? So and I, I mean, drive in the sense that like, don't make me make the decisions. Can you just no. please ask me? So I like, I like guys who know what they want and just goes for it. And they're not afraid of putting themselves out there. Yeah. I th- I think that's sexy. That's, it is sexy. That's nice. Why why does there have to be all of the game behind? And I think in fairness, I'm going to just give some of them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe what they're worried about is women want to take more control now they want to you know maybe this goes back to that whole me too conversation too which is a whole huge topic but i don't like i i want you to find me attractive and i want you to come up to me and put your tongue in my mouth and tell me i want to take you to dinner yeah (laughs) 
So this is this or is whatever the virtual stuff, so. Bumble version of that is. 